One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. I often wonder what it would have been like uh, to be discipled directly by Jesus Christ. Would it have been fun? Would it have been intimidating? Maybe awkward? You know, I'm kind of a prankster. I can see myself trying to get something over on Jesus and him going, I knew you were going to do that. Today I want to talk about uh, what life was like with Jesus and by extension what life is like with Jesus. And so let's begin with his invitation in Matthew 11 verse 28. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I'm humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Jesus, Life with Jesus is a life filled with lessons. Jesus comes to us, and he wants to teach us things, and the things he wants to teach us are are really outside of our framework of understanding. Jesus taught things that in our culture, in any culture, don't make sense. Let me read a couple of passages about Jesus' call to discipleship. Mark 8.34, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Matthew 19.21 says, If you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. We live in a world, even in the church, even those who would call themselves biblical Christians, we have kind of captured the Bible in the past. And we we read it, we believe it, but we don't really believe it's for today or it's relevant for today. Now, as you look at Jesus Christ, here is a man that's calling us to a, a very a complete change in life, leaving a, a, a one lifestyle completely behind and chasing a new one. And, and he makes no apologies for it. He doesn't try to sell it. He doesn't even try to convince it. He just lays out the simplicity of what it is. It's leaving your life behind and pursuing his life. Now, I don't think Jesus would have made a very good recruiter because he he didn't make it easy. And the way that many people view what the church and what Christians should do today is that we should make it easy on people to follow Jesus Christ. That thinking, though, has led us into a place in our Christianity, in the way that it's practiced today, that's very shallow and that takes these messages of Jesus of complete sacrifice and basically locks them away in the past. But here's the question. What if Jesus' way, which seems so difficult, which seems so countercultural, what if Jesus' way is the real and true way to be free? What if freedom isn't the ability to do anything you want? What if it isn't lots of money so you have financial freedom? What if freedom isn't even granted by civil or government authorities? What if freedom is the ability to do what's right. Jesus got into trouble often. He would go into a synagogue on the Sabbath and he would heal someone. He would set them free. He didn't care what day it was because the right thing to do was set someone free, whether it's from the bondage of bad ideas or from an ailment on their bodies. It was the right thing to do. The thing was that the religious leaders had set up a series of rules. And those rules were fine probably most days. But there were times that the rules stopped you from doing the right thing. What if freedom is the freedom to do what's right? The freedom to do what's right for people. The freedom to set others free. To set others loose from their bondage. To touch them and and to give whatever healing that is available for them. Another idea about freedom, what if freedom is actually the courage to do the right thing? Are we free because our government says we're free, or because some judge says we're free, or are we free because we have the courage to be free? I've been reading a lot of stories about our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, 
In many of those countries, it is against the law and counterproductive to their own safety to share Jesus Christ and to give everyone they can access to the story of Jesus. And yet, they do. They have the courage to share the story of Jesus. Therefore, they have freedom that you and I in our country, even though we have the civil freedom, even though the government and judges and uh, legislative systems say that we are free, it doesn't really matter because we don't have the courage to share the story of Jesus Christ. So you tell me who's free. The one who has the freedom or the one who has the courage? The one who acts rightly, no matter what the circumstances are, are the one who is bound by rules that can cause someone to act unrighteously. These are one of many of the lessons we learn following Jesus Christ. Life with Jesus is filled with lessons. Life with Jesus also has its peaks. Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed so his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. Mountaintop experiences are amazing. It is a great day, especially when Jesus Christ is revealed to us in a way that we did not before notice. And those days, they, they fill us. I mean, they're euphoric. They are epiphanies of who Jesus Christ is in our lives. And each one seems like huge. Often these, these revelations of who Jesus is in us, for us, through us, often these revelations seem so large. There, there can be no more. And yet, then we learn that not only is there more, but because of our limited perspective, what those huge things that were so big are actually small things in comparison to the, the infinity of Jesus Christ, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. It's truly a mountaintop experience when you begin to see that Jesus Christ is God's answer for everything. Your money, your family, your marriage, your job, the way you behave, even your recreation, and especially your own heart and your inner wounds. So many people are empty casings walking around. They, they put on an image of success, an image of, uh, you know, I'm getting things done, but on the inside, they don't know who they are. And so it is truly an awakening to discover Jesus Christ as the answer for those many things in our life. So life with Jesus is filled with mountaintops. It's filled with peaks, but it's also filled with the valleys. Matthew 16 tells a, a very interesting story about Peter. Jesus asked the disciples, who did people say he was? And they came up with some answers. And then Jesus, true to his character and practice, looked directly at the disciples and asked them point blank, who do you say that I am? Peter's answer is, you're the Christ, the Son of God. And, and then Jesus uh, tells Peter, you know, you didn't figure this out on your own. The Holy Spirit told you, and you're blessed, and this is the bedrock of the church. Right after that, Jesus tells Peter and all the disciples what's going to happen to him at Jerusalem. And he's telling them how he's going to lay the foundation for the church that they would become through their faith, but he's telling them that he's going to do it through sacrifice and through dying. And Peter just really can't handle that idea. And then Peter tells him, he says, Lord, this can't happen. This, this can't be God's way. And Jesus turns to him and says this in Matthew 16, 23. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God. Some days we get it wrong. Some days we don't understand what God's doing. And let's face it, God does not work like we expect. God put his number one apostle to the Gentiles in jail for most of his ministry. That apostle did write most of the New Testament, but that New Testament wasn't actually gathered together into one work until almost 300 years later. And then it was almost 1,400 years later before the Bible is actually put in print because printing wasn't even a possibility up to that point. And so God just does things in ways that don't make sense to us. 
And in our lives, we get such a small view of what God's doing. And it's easy for us to question. It's easy for us to lose our faith. But we must always remember that God's ways are not our ways. That God does things in a way that is perfect, that is true, that's going to bring about the most good. But from our corrupt understanding, from our viewpoint that is blinded by sinfulness and mistakes, we can't see all that God can. And so often we end up in those valleys. And we wonder if our faith is real, if the Word of God is true, and all kinds of other heart-destroying things. So let me conclude by simply saying this. Jesus, life with Jesus is real, it's true, and it's amazing, and it's worth whatever valley you and I have to wade through. Jesus put it this way, That kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again. He sold everything he owned and got enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. And when he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Jesus is worth it. Life with Jesus is worth it. No matter what the cost, no matter... Who walks away, no matter what, Jesus is worth it. He's really living, and He's real life. I hope that you enjoy this day in your Savior, Jesus Christ.